Welcome, my name is Ian Hecox, and today we are watching a very silly, very spooky movie called Twitches. And I am watching that today with my boy Shane. Hey, how's it going? Good to be here. I was not familiar with, with Twitches. Um, this, this is gonna be a bit of a, this is a safe space, right? Because I'm about to say something that is off the rails. Um, okay, yeah, I think. I have, so this is a Disney Channel original movie. Yes. I have never seen one. You've never seen a Disney Channel original movie? No. Holy crap, this is no longer safe. But it is I, interesting to point out, Sister, yeah. Sister, I, I grew up, because I was watching Sister, Sister on Disney Channel, I thought that's where it was originally on. Oh no. So I, I didn't realize this was actually Tia and Tamara's first time like doing a Disney thing. Like officially, oh, right? Well, I'm assuming the Sister, Sister, my guess, would be it was probably on ABC. Oh, started on ABC, moved to the WB, so they switched sides because WB is not. And and that ended in like '99, so this was years later. This was years later. We'll get into it, but yeah. uh, they're 27 when they when they made this, and they're supposed to be 21 year olds. That's a that's not that's too, normal. That's not too much of a stretch. Yeah. So uh, Twitches, as you'll find out very soon, stands for. Twin Witches. Yeah. Very Halloween coded movie. It's not just Halloween coded, it's literally takes place on Halloween. And you'll find out like this whole movie takes place over the course of one day. Yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't make any sense no. because they go through like this whole thing and it all happens within a day and we're just supposed to just be like, yeah, okay. Ian, what did you originally think Twitches stood for? Because I heard yeah. Twin Witches was not your, your initial thought. No, I thought it was Teen Witches. I was getting it mixed up with the movie Teen Witch. Right. And, Sabrina uh, the Teenage Witch. No, not Sabrina the Teenage Witch. There's, there's a movie from the late 80s called Teen Witch and it has this very epic rap battle. I was like, why are they calling this Teen Witches? T and Tamara are playing 21-year-olds. This doesn't make any sense. And I thought I freaking got them. And then I was like, and then I realized after. I was like, oh, it's... Twin witches, because it, twin witches, which they literally say in the movie. We'll get to that part. I love a movie that says the title. And oh yeah, you gotta have that. Here's the log line before we jump into the movie. Two teen witches. The log line says teen. That's what f me up. Are you dead serious? The log line that I okay. took from IMDb. That adds to my theory. That adds to my theory. Go on. Okay. Two teen witches who were separated at birth and were adopted by two different families meet on their 21st birthday and must use their powers to save the world in which they were born where their birth mother still lives. Wait, so Very that, that contradicts itself. It's, I know. Uh, it mentions their 21st birthday. I know. This is IMDb that I think I ripped this from. So 21-year-old teens. 21-year-old teens. I'm a 32-year-old teen. Hey, and I love that for you. We're just gonna jump right into the movie. Yeah, yeah. And it opens with the most PS2 looking graphics. Oh, I PS2 is being generous. I was, I would say 90s CD-ROM yeah. graphics. And I just wanna point out that Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire came out on the same year. And I'm pretty sure those graphics were, were litty. Okay, so bad graphics right off the bat. You'd think that they would put a little money into the beginning, just like hook people, but also using the most Basic boring font for a Disney Channel original movie. This is like Windows Movie Maker. It yeah, might be I, the standard font, but it, it, it's not like they didn't even try to make it spooky for a spooky movie. I see. I, I, I got to just say my hot take off the bat here okay. is that I do not think this is a Halloween movie at all. I think this was originally supposed to just be. It's a standard fantasy movie, and then there were rewrites. It got pushed. It moved around, and then they're like, you know what? Let's slap. It happens on Halloween, it's a Halloween movie. But nothing about this movie is a Halloween movie otherwise. But they say that their birthdays are on Halloween. That's an easy rewrite. And everybody's wearing Halloween costumes and they're walking around town. And, but Halloween has no other part in it. Halloween has nothing to do with the plot. They throw a party. Yeah, spoiler alert! <laughs> what we love about, about mediocre movies is uh, one of the hallmarks of like a not great movie is having just really bad exposition and and also this is based off of a book and when you're dealing with a book you have to compress a lot of information into a movie so sometimes you just really have to rattle off a lot of shit so we start right off the bat with some some just just info dumping because they're trying to get us up to speed on what's going on 
Uh, they say there's like a prophecy that says that the twins could stop the darkness. We don't know what the darkness is. It's just no. labeled as the darkness. And they were born too young to stop it, but maybe they stopped it. They also don't really explain that. The darkness raged across the magical land of Coventry, overpowering the forces of light. The twin daughters of the sun and the moon were born on Halloween, and so was a new hope. The prophecy says that only the twin witches can restore Coventry's light. But can they escape the darkness on the very day of their birth? I had to rewind this like three times to like try to be like, wait, do, is that important to know? Because they're like, they were born and one's the sun and one's the, the moon and they were born and they could stop the darkness, but they were too young, but they stopped it. And it's like, huh? And then two people pick up the babies and hide them in different dimensions. I'll meet you in another dimension. Right. Are we going to the dimension that's purple? Just or... run. <laughs> little one it's okay little one we're going to be safe I don't think we were followed they don't go they say we have to go to different dimensions they don't go to different dimensions they, they both go to the same dimensions and there's a dimension that's purple I just want to speak on these two individuals that we meet here yes. uh, the lead singer of one Republic and Claire Danes <laughs> are the protectors of these twins See, I, I had labeled I had labeled the guy as uh, <laughs> I had labeled the guy as pop punk Jesse Pinkman. <laughs> Dude, I gotta be honest. Uh, I, they are the probably the part the my. I criticize them the most in this movie. Mm. You can tell that probably in the after they finished filming, they were like, you know, we improvised a lot in our scenes, and you can see it yeah. where they say their lines, and then they kind of add like a couple half lines that add nothing. Yep, and then and then it just cuts away immediately. It just cuts away. Yeah, like the director's like just. Or like whoever was like editing this is like, yeah, just end it there. Like we'll see other we'll see other parts later, but but they're doing this like little riff off, and they just cut. Got to be honest, okay. I'm not a fan of the protectors. Uh, and look, to 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 act in a movie with this kind of script, mm -hmm. not easy. You're most likely gonna come across bad. But I think some people did really well with this. Mm. The protectors, unfortunately, not so hot. Okay. So they're not eating is what you They are saying. not eating. So they take the babies to another dimension. Oh, look at that. It's our dimension. Yeah. It's Earth. Oh, so crazy. Um, they take them to the same city. Uh, but they're, they're separated. They're raised by different families. Uh, so now we jump 21 years later um, after the magical babies were brought. Uh-oh. So here we are. Uh, I don't know if that's Tia or Tamara. That's Tamara. Okay, Tamara. So... That's Tamara, a.k.a. Apollo. Okay, well... And, but they also have Earth names as well. Yeah. And so I think it's easier Alex. For, for me. I just refer to her as the rich one. Is Alex the, is the rich one? Alex is the oh, sorry, that's Cameron. Oh, okay, Cameron. That's Cameron. As long as the sun's up, she's up. Happy birthday, Cameron. Thanks, Mom. Okay, well, that's the rich one. Yeah. And she's quirky. And she's like, she's rich. She's got a family that loves her. And then, uh, then we got the poor one. And like her adopted mom died. They keep referencing it, but there's never any tie to it in the movie. Mm. They're just like, my mom died. My mom, who died horribly, and I witnessed it. Do you miss your mom? Nicole. What? They're hitting like on all these tropes with like, like the rich one, she plays tennis. She's rich, and she has a goofy dad. Um, and then they're like, this one's the poor one. She sleeps on a couch. Um, she has a roommate. Ugh. Burr. Uh, and her adopted mom's dead. We're getting some hints that okay. that maybe maybe the rich one is getting visions Ooh. Uh, that are connected to maybe her sister. Oh, that's they're very not subtle about it because she's like she's like, yeah. The mom's like that's a nice self portrait, and she's like, ah, I, it doesn't feel like a self portrait. It doesn't feel like me, and it's like yeah, dummy. She's wearing a different amulet than you are. That must be a different person. The parents yeah. were a fascinating subject for me in this, yeah. in this movie. The mom, her old ass mom, old middle-aged mom. Yeah. Well, you know? No, they, they know that it's clear that she's adopted. Right, she's adopted, but they, they couldn't adopt her when they're kids. You could... They had to be at least 18 when they adopted her, so oh. she has to be at least 40, which is so old. 
this is the thing with exposition. It should actually like tie into the movie. Yeah. But she literally just like read out the itinerary for um, her party where she's like, there's going to be a hundred people at 8 p.m. for your Halloween birthday ball. A hundred guests coming at eight o'clock for your Halloween birthday ball. Like also the way that she says it is like It's pretty un- insane. <laughs> it's pretty insane. This scene though is so good because the dad is just fully doing his thing here. Oh yeah. He has like 50 gags that he does in like the span of five seconds. One of my favorite things about this era, like 2005, was just how much it was like, we like shopping. That's our life. Mm-hmm. We just like shopping. We go to the mall and we shop. And they really amped that up here. My favorite store is having a sale! <gasps> ah! We see our first little bit of magic oh, where pop punk Jesse Pinkman uh, throws a lens flare. Do you want to? Do you want to throw some magic? <gasps> yeah. See, look, that's the budget. <laughs> That's the budget that Disney had for this. Our editor did that in this amount of time. Yeah, but in 2005, that cost $5 million. Probably. Well, this is a $20 million budget. Are you dead serious? Dead serious. No fucking way. Yeah. No. Yeah. That changes. That This just went from a movie where I was like, you know what? For what it is, it's fine. To this is a bad movie. That <laughs> sucks. The 20 million I did not know about. No. 20 that, million is low budget. I know, but like, eh, they could have done a little better. Yeah. Than this. Okay. That's um, fair. But unfortunately, this is this is really where the protectors are. I'm not gonna say they're bad actors. They just are worse than everyone else in the movie. You know, I. No, there's one person who's worse than them. Their dialogue is very bad, but it's also in like the movements. It's their their riffing is weird. I, I think... just think their shit is not as good as other people. I think they're quirky. You are so ready. I can just. No, oh, no, but I won't. Although I. No, how weird would that be, right? They could have played it so much better, I think. I feel like they're here for the adults, you know? For to to make like, aha, uh-huh, like this is my old ball and chain kind of kind of vibe. Jesse Pinkman, pop punk Jesse Pinkman, uh throws a lens flare uh and changes some signs to try to entice uh the the poor one to apply to a job where the rich one is shopping. Okay. The protectors, uh this is one of those scenes where the protectors, the actors playing the protectors were just asked to riff. Mm-hmm. And it's very clear, like, they were like, this is going nowhere, so they just cut the scene halfway. I guess I guess now now that I'm older, I just like immediately spot the Canadian sorry. So oh. we're gonna we're gonna get one of those. Subtle. Well she can be a little she can be a little stubborn. You really raised your voice at me well, there. I'm sorry. It's just you get under he, he had, didn't finish a sentence. No, because he had nothing after that. I bet you he was just, because he's just, it, I, sorry, I, I, I can't think, of, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank, and then they're like, all right, cut, and yeah. then that's it. And like, that's it. So they use, they just use that. And they're like, they're like, look, you said sorry again. Yeah. Can you please say sorry? Now we're in the same store. She's applying for a job. The, other, the rich one's shopping. I mean, they're gonna notice each other immediately. Uh, oh, nope. No. They do all these. They do all these fake outs. Yeah. Where they're like, huh? Isn't this so silly? Like you think they're gonna run into each other, and then they don't. Right. Right. They tease it a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The poor one. She does this whole like thing with like the the sales lady that doesn't want to give her a job. Then she gets the job, and then like zero time passes, and she's just working already. Yeah. Like, there's no orientation. There's no paperwork. There's no uniform. It's just like it's just like the most like. Uh, child, uh, under childlike understanding of how one gets a job. Yeah. Where she's like, "You're hired. Go work. Go fold some clothes." I mean, look, 2005 was a different time. That's true. In 2005, you and Anthony said, "Hey, we want to be famous YouTubers," and you just became them. That's true. So uh, back then, you just kind of chose your job and you just do it. Now you have to apply. She does this whole thing where she's like honest. Yeah. To the sales lady, and she's like, "Ha." Huh. We're salespeople, we can't be honest. I really, really need a job. Honesty, impressive. Unfortunately, it's valued everywhere but in fashion and sales. Sorry, I'm sure you'll find something. I understand things in a way. So she doesn't give her the job, and then she's like, oh, and she turns away, and she turns back, and she's like, 
I love that bag of yours or whatever it was, a bag or shoes or something like that. And she's like, oh my gosh, thanks. She was like, huh, I was lying. And, uh, and then she got the job. That makes perfect sense to me. Oh my gosh, I love your shoes. They are like so cute. Thanks, I just got them. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Always neg the person that's hiring yeah, yeah, yeah. you. That's how you get the real good jobs. So then after like three fake outs, we finally get the reveal. <gasps> oh, sorry, here, I'll get it. So they run into each other, they scream. I also want to mention that this is how they meet in Sister Sister. Yeah, no, no, no. I was watching this, I'm like, I'm pretty sure they're just reenacting the yeah. first episode of Sister Sister. It's a great show. They're identical twins. For some reason, we as humans are enamored with, with the idea of identical twins. Yeah. Very popular online. It's basically people's like whole personalities is like, I'm an identical twin. Isn't that quirky? Yeah, I don't trust most identical twins. I think most of them are scary. Yeah. Um, uh, the Property Brothers, whoa. You know, I don't know what they're up to. But you can tell the pro you can tell the property brothers apart from each other. And you can tell Tia and Tamara apart from each other. Nope. Absolutely. One of them has a beauty mark. Oh really? Yeah. Do Tamara. They, do you think they put do you think No. They, do you think that's like I'm gonna start I'm gonna start that conspiracy theory. <laughs> that Tamara's that, that Tamara's beauty mark is fake? Yeah. Or that the parents like did it to her at a young age. Like <laughs> tattooed it on her face, so it's like so it's like, this is like your quirk. You Ian, know? you are allowed to have whatever opinions you want. They can remain over there, and I will stay here Great. in my safe Great. space. but I'm just, we should start that rumor. And let's point out, they are meeting their identical twin. Yes. For the, they did not know they had an identical twin, and they're running into them just out shopping. This is how one reacts. Yes. Well, they freak out at first. Yes. They have their moment, yes. and then after that, Kind of, like I feel like they get they get over it so quickly. Well, one is very invested in this. The the rich one yeah. is like, oh my gosh, like we should be best friends. Ah! And then the the poor one's like, get away from me. I don't know you. You are a stranger. And also, she doesn't believe that they're sisters. Stay away from me. We're not sisters. Why not? We could be. I'm starting to wonder if the twin that plays the rich one. I'm Tamara. starting to wonder if Tamara is a better actor. I'm gonna be real honest with you. Do you want to hear my opinion on this? Yeah, I see. I see some reactions in the background. Watching this, watching this movie, and I'm, I forget what my opinion on Sister Sister was on the yeah. show. I thought Tamara had more on-screen charisma. I thought Ooh. so. Now I will Ooh. say, let me say, Ooh. let me say, let me say, I thought both of them are, are actually really good in this. I couldn't have guessed. I mean, I could have guessed, but I would have been wrong. Though, I am usually a really good guesser. It's your birthday today, isn't okay. it? Yep. How did you know that? I'm not saying I, I think Tamara, I didn't think, I didn't think Tamara's like up here and Tia's down here. But I just, I truly liked Tamara's performance a lot. Yeah. They played different characters. Um, and I, I did some research, so I know some cool fun facts oh. that play into that. But I typically was just laughing more at Tamara's delivery on stuff. But Tia's character, is more the yeah. dramatic voice of reason. So I think that might be. She's like the straight character. But I thought they both did a really great job. I. And like that scene is a great example. That's a tough scene to pull off. That should be cheesy. And I was told that um, the black community has very specific opinions on Tia and Tamara. Yeah, which I don't think we. I was not too. I, I don't even know. Um, so we have someone here uh, to represent the entire black community. <laughs> Um, uh, and all of their opinions. And I don't think they're gonna come out anymore. <laughs> um, just know that you're representing everyone, Mac. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah! Hello, representative of the black community here. <laughs> Mac does it, yes. I will say it's a very, it's a very heated discussion on like who is, <laughs> It's because they're twin sisters. Not that, there's not many twins in the black community. So there's always that big discussion, like, who's better, you know? One of them's dating a white man, you know? And so, oh. <laughs> there's a, you know, it's a big discussion, a big situation, but you know, it's always, it's been going on since like the 90s. Okay. But yeah, you know, you, you said your opinion, you know, and okay, it's, it it's been registered. You know, it's, some people might think it's wrong. A lot of people might think it's right. 
I will say a, a good majority <laughs> of people will say it's right. So oh. yeah. <laughs> but oh. that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Okay. <laughs> and I am the representative of the whole black community. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mac. Thank you, Mac. I do agree that Tamara does have a funner, a more fun role in this. Yeah. Because she gets to be like clueless. It's my birthday too. See? We are twins. <gasps> Wait, oh, uh, this isn't happening. This is too weird. I think Tamara was funnier in this, but a fun fact, they originally were playing the opposite roles. Yeah. And then they swapped, and they were like, hey, I wanna play that role, and I want to, you, want, you play this role. And then they swapped, and I think they really fit their roles yeah. very well. Um, I cannot imagine Tia playing that role. And I can't imagine Tamara playing the other role. I just, I also really truly think they're both really good actors. Like, this is a Disney Channel original movie. There's a specific style to that. And I think they're nailing it without seeming bad. Or, or cheesy. It is over the top acting though. That's kind of the point of it. And I know this because I was on Disney Channel at one point and it's, it's a conversation that I've had with acting coaches where they talk about like, we make fun of Disney acting, but it's a style of acting that can be done well. Selena Gomez did it really well. Some people do it really bad and then that, that's what it gets known for. Yeah. But I think they nailed it. So then we see them uh, realize that they have powers for the first time. Nice. They, they hold hands. Some magic happens for a reason that really isn't explained. And then they rip a bunch of clothes off of mannequins. I don't know why that's important. I don't think they notice it here, but how fucking crazy is it, is it that you discover you have a twin sister and then magic starts happening? Yeah. I'd be freaking the f out. They remain so calm. Yeah, they're pretty chill about it. They're they like, kind of hate like, everything. Oh, what just happened? This is awesome. Okay, now that was weird. <laughs> Okay. Okay, now, that was weird. I mean, us being identical twins, a little off, but that was weird. Do you recognize that house? No. So just in case you didn't know, uh, yeah. Rich girl is rich. She's so rich, in fact, that she lives at Regina George's house from Mean Girls. Oh my God, holy shit, and this came out the same year. It's around the same time. Yeah, it's around the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty awesome house. Yeah, your your stereotypical rich girl house. Yep. So uh, so now we get this whole like we get this whole montage of rich girl taking poor girl around her house and and poor girl being like, wow, you have this. Wow, your bedroom's big. Wow, you have a servant. Completely forgetting about the fact that they slowed time a second ago. Yeah, and that's <laughs> unimportant. What she cares about is the Porsche in the house, which, to be honest, I probably would too. And then we find out that, you know, rich girl can draw, and she's been drawing all sorts of weird stuff. You're rich and talented? Damn. They they show this uh, this drawing of this like woman. It's like this photorealistic drawing. And they're like, I feel like I know her. Like, I wonder why. Yeah, I think they landed on this casting because it's hard to picture Tia being this talented. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just leaning into it now. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Dude, the Tia fans, I am not gonna check Tia Twitter after this gonna comes come out. for you. But she doesn't have it. I think they're both talented. I like them both. I saw them at the airport once. So That's cool. Poor girl goes into a closet, but guess what? It's Narnia. It's not just an ordinary <laughs> closet. It's a, a little place that they were born called Coventry. Coventry. Yeah, I literally forgot <laughs> what it's called. And I like that they, it's the same trope as um, as Narnia, which came out the same year. And just when I thought my day couldn't get any stranger. I'm sorry, okay, that delivery wasn't great. That's bad. That that delivery, unfortunately, I gotta this be harsh here. More into... I gotta be honest, that, and I get that that's tough. She's she's just probably looking at nothing. Like, she's looking at a whole set of crew members. She's looking just, at a She's looking at a boom. Like holding on to- like, A sound a guy just holding a boom like this. She has to be like, okay. Just when I thought this day couldn't get any stranger. <laughs> that's a tough line. Look, it's probably one of the hardest lines to deliver, because it's, that is, just for, so you know, that line has easily been said in, 10 other Disney Channel original movies. Yeah. Just when I thought this day couldn't get any weirder. Easily, luck of the Irish, they had to have said that. Um, Maybe it's like requirement for a Disney movie. Probably. Double, you, t double teamed, double teamed, they probably said it. 
Could you give us a read? Okay. All right, so I open the door. Open the door. Shut it. <laughs> Just when I thought this day couldn't get any weirder. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was good. I believed it. It's a hard line. I believed it. The, and the nominees are Tia Maori for Twitches. Just when I thought this day couldn't get any weirder. <laughs> well, I will say somebody Meryl did. Meryl Streep. Somebody <laughs> did win an award for their performance in this movie. Are you fucking serious? I'm serious, and I will reveal that at the end. Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited. Then we get another just insane exposition dump. The you know, dad's dead, mom's alive. There's nine or maybe nine and a half dimensions. That's like their like joke part. Uh, they talk about the future of Coventry and how it's it's all up to them and it's in the Twitch's hands to save all of Coventry, this land that they don't know. After all that, I'm sure they're thinking just when this day couldn't get any weirder. <laughs> yeah. sure. And then and then uh, then it's revealed that like one has the gift of knowing, which is. Tia, the poor one, yeah, and then the rich one has the gift of seeing, which means that she's she's seen, she sees visions. That's why she's drawing everything. So the knowing person has had dreams of this bad stuff that has happened. Right. So she kind of like these dreams that she always thought were just dreams could be reality now. I know how the story ends. Remember, Alex? Please wait. There was some bad acting in there. Mm. I still think overall, I'm, I'm on Tia and Tamara's side. I think they're overall pretty good. I didn't love Tamara's weight, but the protector's acting is just so much worse. So sweet. I wonder if we should have mentioned they're marked for death. Why would we tell them that? I don't know. Claire I Danes, was I wonder if we should have told them they're marked for death. We can't let them know that. And let's riff for a little bit. And then they yell cut and they go, I really like that riffing that we're doing. I like when we said they're marked for death. But that we were, our line delivery is so funny. This might be the only Disney Channel original movie where somebody's marked for death, though. Absolutely not. I think that's actually the plot of uh, uh, Don't Look Under the Bed. We get evil McEvil face with the scar. They don't say that he's a bad guy yet, but it's like so obvious because he's got the black cloak. He's got black gloves. Uh, he's the brother of the king that got killed and he's you know trying to help out the queen from the darkness um but they're together sort of maybe they're like married now are they is i i, don't, I didn't know if i got that the i think i was too distracted by the fact that the queen's acting is the most top notch in this movie she fucking gives a performance meanwhile thantos that's right thanos with a t yep the bad guy, he gives, he's he's giving Skyrim NPC. Mm. He's just like, what's going on? What? Oh, the king? Whoa, oh, oh no, you can't be serious. And she's just pouring her heart out and he's giving her nothing. Interesting. God damn. I wonder if when they got his over the shoulder, she was like, you know what, you can just leave. <laughs> I'll act to an X on the camera. <laughs> I thought she was, she was incredible. I didn't think she was great. Oh, are you kidding me? Watch this scene. All right, we're gonna watch this scene. For a Disney Channel original movie, watch. How have they been surviving all these years? There's a very real chance they might be in league with the darkness. No. Someone has been protecting them. What were my brother's servants' names? Uh, Eliana, Karsh? You know they were killed in the battle that night with Aaron. My husband, your brother. Heroes, I have no doubt. I just love like the exposition, like my husband, your brother. Nobody talks like that, but they just have to get all that information out. Yeah, I'd say the real reason why this movie is bad mm. is because they are still going through exposition over halfway through the movie. Yes. They tried to cram a fantasy novel into a Disney Channel original movie and that doesn't work. We go from one exposition into another exposition where actually the one twin that has the knowing gift knows the entire backstory of when they were even little tiny beady babies. Um, dad gave him all the powers uh, and then he got his soul sucked and then the babies activated their amulets and warded off the darkness. So basically uh, Tamara's drawings are completely unnecessary if Tia just already knew all of it. I, I don't know like what's going on with Toronto, but they got a bunch of boats in the background. 
in this park and cow statues. Oh, and the cows are the best part of this whole movie. And here we lived more or less happily for the last 21 years. So you don't know what happened to our mom, Miranda? You think that's her name, right? When I originally watched this, I thought it was the protectors. Yeah. Disguising themselves. I thought it was the darkness watching. But now it's probably the darkness watching, I realize. I don't, but I don't think But that's it still is. weird. Yeah. They do not establish, I want to point out, that is like a very singular event. Yep. Nothing happens. The, nothing that. does that again in the whole movie. So then they realize like they can use, they can use their powers for stuff. Um, for, for good, maybe? There's like a guy that's loud in, in the deli right here. And they're like, and they kill him. Let's spray him with his soda. Because you're so loud and rude, it's time to have some fun with food. And now you're going. He's like, oh, it burns! <laughs> it's like on fire. He turned it into boiling. Acid. Yeah, he dies. Just see this skeleton. This movie would be twice as good if that happened. And then, and then they say the thing. They say the thing. Go Twitches, go Twitches. Twitches, I've been thinking about that all day. Twin witches. Said the thing. I was gonna say like, you know, they just met each other and they're already in sync like that, but I have heard that when twins are separated, they end up like marrying people with the same name and like having the same jobs and all sorts of bullshit. So I don't trust them. Mm. They're proof that we're in a simulation. I don't like that. Um, what they don't realize is the more that they use magic, the more the darkness increases, or like the more the darkness can like find them. They don't explain this until they just explain it outright. Where uh, our our guy is like, he looks through these magic like uh, they live style glasses and sees the darkness and is like. Uh-oh, the darkness is getting bigger. Darkness is growing stronger. <laughs> I always wanted a sister. <laughs> he fell! Dude, that was so good. I never get tired of that. I do. Really? You do it all the time at parties and... Why didn't you say no something? In, well, I just... Cameron! Again, they just cut him off halfway through, halfway through their epic riff. <laughs> the poor one wants to fight the darkness because she realizes like, oh, this is like bad and we got to save them. Uh, and the rich one just has like too much generational wealth to care. Well, yeah, well, the poor one's got nothing to lose. Yeah, you exactly. Know, it's like, we might as well. And it she's might... like, my life is pretty great. I'm sorry yours sucks, but that's kind of not my problem. I thought running out was my thing. I guess it's something else we have in common. Be careful. They've so, known each other for like two I, hours by this point. I just want to point out, the fence. That fence ended right there. And yeah. she was like, wait, stop, no, don't go. And the, 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 she could have just walked around the fence. But Ian, it's symbolism. Yeah, true. It's symbolism for There's the something things between that are getting them. in between them. You're right, bro. Her poor sister goes to Coventry uh, to, to meet her mama. Nice. And uh, we get this very, very real, very believable, not poorly acted scene. And this is, keep in mind, this is the first time they've ever met. And this is how you react when you meet your mom for the first ever time. Artemis? <laughs> I kind of go by Alex now, but... Yeah, it's me. Hi, mom. You're alive. My hot take is that that's not that bad of acting for a DCOM. That's actually yeah. pretty, you need to watch other DCOMs no, because that's, that's fair. That, that's, that's, fair. that's that's not bad. Yeah, um, it's me, mom. Those are like the lines. Like Those are the lines she was, she was given. That she did it. You're being very charitable. Uh, look, no, I'm being real here. I think the mom is the best actress in this whole movie, that's followed fair. by Tamara, followed by Tia. Followed by that lady in the, the clothing shop earlier. She did pretty good. Sorry. So at this point, we're over an hour into the movie 
and we're still getting exposition. Yeah, of, a, of up, a hour and 20 movie. Yeah, to set up the big, the big reveal. So, you know, we don't know who's orchestrating the darkness here. Yeah. So we gotta, we gotta set that up. Also, real quick, did, did, did the poor one go back in time there? Or was that just, does their mom just look like that still? Okay, so I wanna point out, so I looked this up. The, uh, the mom is only nine years older than Tia and Tamara. The actress that plays the mom. The queen, you mean? The queen. I got one that'll do you better. The mom in, in their real life? Yeah. Same fucking age as them. Oh, this one right here? Yes, she's 28 <laughs> as of filming this. <laughs> and like I said, this old ass mom, do you, can you imagine getting cast to play the pair, the mom? Like I know yeah. adoptive, but that means she was at least 18 when she adopted right, them. Right. I think she's supposed to be like 40 something. It's actually, this. it's actually like more unbelievable that an adopted mom would be younger because like, yeah. there's teen pregnancies, so right. that could get you closer. But you can't adopt a Literally kid. Literally have 15. to be an adult. Um, so no, oh. like, can you imagine being 28 and they're like, yeah, you look, you're gonna play a 44 year old. Yeah, that's rough. So the mom then reveals to her, she's like, oh yeah, I used to draw these scary drawings with faces on them. And she's like, what? I drew faces in the darkness? Meaning that there's a face to the darkness. And so she's like, where is it? She's like, oh, it's in your scrapbook upstairs. You used to, you know, there's, there's a face, they're disturbing, whatever. And so she runs up to her room she never thought to do this before, or like, I don't know what the deal is. So she goes flipping through a scrapbook, and there's the face of our uncle boy, Mr. Thantos. Hamlet guy, Thantos. So, like, that's supposed to be a reveal for us. It shouldn't be a reveal for her, because she's never seen this guy's face before. Oh, that's so true. So, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Like, so they're doing this whole thing, and they never, like, really connect that in the movie. The darkness eats one of the protectors, our, our guy. <laughs> And then uh, we get where I do have to agree with you, really horrible line read yep. from our actress here. And she's like, oh no, we don't, we don't have much time. Go, hurry, you don't have much time. I think are you she, are I, you thinking this? Yeah, I'm thinking exactly what you're thinking of. What was that? Back. What was that smoke monster doing to her? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I wasn't gonna say anything because I was like, I was like, is my mind in the gutter? Because one of the initial scream is scared. Yeah. And then the it's next like, one it's like, ah, ah, it's oh. like herbal essences commercial from the 90s. Oh no. <laughs> we get a, a great moment of acting. Uh, and then like this is something that like I don't think people nowadays will understand. Uh, is the commercial break fade, fade out, fade in. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, that, you know, Disney Channel had to abide to because they have commercials. They have commercials for Disney shows. Yeah. They don't, they don't have actual regular commercials. Yeah, which is wild to me. Mm -hmm. I love the fade out. Yeah. I wish we could see the commercial that it cuts to because you know it's like, yeah. it fades out and then all of a sudden it's just like, What's up, I'm Beans from Even Stevens. <laughs> and you're watching Disney Channel and it's just like him like, oh, pfft, and yeah. he's like, oh, I'm jacking it off. And then it's like, <laughs> Beans. Beans jacking off the Disney wand is now stuck in my head. Oh, pfft. Whoa. <laughs> Fine God. Okay, so. Uh, um, oh man. So anyway, she's she's on her way there. Yeah. But look, Thantos is already on to what's going on. He just sucked the souls of the protectors. He's coming back. He's gonna yeah, he's gonna yeah. lie to the queen. He's gonna get them. But guess what? She beat him there. And we get this we get this thing that I just wanna like I wanna do this with my friends. I beat you here by a good five minutes. Paula, I'm so relieved. Whatever, loser. Whatever, loser. I also just love the pose of her hands on him. Be like, and and you know what? This. She nailed it. I loved it. Thantos, then then he's like, oh no, you're together, but too bad, you're too late. 
I'm going to suck your souls. And then he like snatches uh, the mom and he's swirling around and he's like, ha, 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 ha. And they're like, we have to band together. And I think that whoever wrote this scene or whoever decided to shoot it this way, this whole thing could be seen as a bad acid trip. Okay. Because everything that happens in it is like what you would go through in like a bad acid trip where there's like stuff happening and you're like, I don't know what's happening. And then somebody's like, think of think of the things you love. And you're like, my mom. And then there's like rays of light shooting out and you're like, my sister, uh, pizza. And then you like have this like breakthrough sort of moment, you know, like you go through the darkness and you talk about the things you love and then you like have this sort of breakthrough. I imagine that this is like a bad acid trip that they worked into a Disney movie. Okay, I mean, I've never done acid, but um, I'm guessing, I guess you have. I will say that shot of them like hugging at the end, kind of epic. Kind of epic. Kind of epic. But it's the like, Jabberwockies you, you see, almost got them. Yeah, I know, Jabberwocky almost got them. Uh, but you see what I mean about the bad acid trip? Oh, it's- They're it's, like it's, screaming at things that aren't there. That's where $19 million of their budget went to. Yeah, and so PS2 land was saved. Yep. Some great shots of the land where I'm guessing it's not inhabited by people. It's anymore. inhabited by like five people. Yeah. The Queen and Thantos are the only people in that castle. I'm convinced, yeah. yeah. And then we just get this classic, classic ending. I knew something wonderful was gonna happen today. Go Twitches, go Twitches, it's our birthday, it's a birthday. It's, it's a sweet ending and you know what? You know what I think this whole review of it shows? That this is not a Halloween movie because at what points in our discussion, did we talk about anything related to Halloween other than it takes place on Halloween? It, it, it's, a, it's a fantasy movie. It's just a pure fantasy movie. Their birthday's on Halloween. Yeah, that's, that's it, okay. There's costumes. Th hardly. There's candy corn. It, it, on the cereal. Yeah. That's the one part. I think that they made this movie intending for it to come out at a different time and be a fantasy movie, but then Disney was like, actually, we need a, we need a Halloween release. No, that's release. fair. And so they slapped together some Halloween shit. That's fair. You told me that someone won an award for this movie. I need to know who it was. Was it the dad for best pratfall? <gasps> okay, I'll, 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 I'll narrow it down. This person won a Canadian comedy award for best performance by female. Oh God, it's it's the protector, isn't it? It's her. Wow. Jennifer wow. Robertson. Harsh. Holy shit. The protector. Holy shit. Well, maybe it's it's for her. It's Canadian humor. It, yeah, that one Canadian humor when you know when darkness is sucking you and you go, oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and the award committee was like, yes. No, Comedy. she was, she was, I'm sorry. I, I'm not criticizing her in general as an actor. I'm saying in this movie, I think she was really bad. <laughs> I look, and that's I, okay. That's, it's fine. Like, like I said, yeah. if I was in this movie, I probably would have done the same. There's definitely some moments like watching it back now. Can I guess the rating that this got? Yeah, you can guess uh, IMDb score. I think the score, I'm going to guess it, it's a 4.4. It's a mm. I think it got maybe high because a lot of people are nostalgia and they, they like this movie. Well, you're going to be surprised because it has a 5.7 on IMDb. Whoa! Which is better than Smosh the Movie's 3.3. <laughs> so it's better than Smosh the Movie. I found this really funny quote uh, from Tia. Tia Maori told People Magazine that her son, Cree, is not the biggest Twitches fan. Quote, Twitches was on and he was like, eh, and changed the channel after five minutes. Damn, brutal. The first five minutes are very rough. Oh, it's so confusing. Yeah. No idea what's going on. I still don't really know what's going on in this movie. It makes total sense to me, bro. Okay. So we are now to the most important part of the video, the Ian scale. Now we're going to be rating this movie on three criteria. I, idea, A, acting, in, entertaining. So first, I, idea. Was it a good idea? I would argue, sorta, but overall, maybe, I think it was the, the overall general idea for a DCOM, good. The idea to do the whole thing in a one movie, bad. Mm. Uh, it's too convoluted, too much. They should, have, they should have removed a ton of plot out of it. It felt like it was multiple movies in one. Simplify it. And then also, the, the, the answer is just love at the end. Like, it's darkness, and then love is the answer. It's just Kingdom Hearts. 
yeah. which was already out at this time, so it's not original. Yeah, I I agree with that. I think I think it was a good idea. I think that's like a fun fantasy thing for like a kid. It's just like Harry Potter. It's like, what if I was a secret wizard or a witch? Um, I think it's a fun idea. I agree. It was not a good idea to make the movie because it's just too much lore. Too much built like, yeah. like I want to see more Coventry. Why is it just two people in a castle and you don't see anybody else? There just wasn't enough time to really show us everything. A acting good, bad. I'm gonna overall say good. Wow, I'm gonna say bad. I, I think overall good. The T and Tamara, I think they they did a great job. I think Tia did a good job too. But Tamara was my favorite. Okay, fair. And uh, finally, in was it entertaining? Should people should people go out and and start watching this? Uh, personally, absolutely not. I yeah. I, I I think this movie was too confusing, too weird, just just not it is, it is all over the place. Um, no. If you are eleven, a girl, and have no siblings, and have always dreamed of having siblings, like a, like a secret twin, and you dreamed of having like magical powers, and you dreamed of driving a Porsche Boxster, mm-hmm. this is the movie for you. One last thing I want to say about this movie, though, okay. is, is no, did I find it entertaining? No. I also haven't watched, this is the only Disney Channel original movie I've watched. As an adult. As an adult, like, frankly. So I don't know. If I was 11 years old, maybe I would have liked this because I liked almost all the others. What I will say is watching this movie is crazy because this is a year, this is about two years before the Hannah Montana revolution mm. where every single IP on Disney and Nickelodeon became about being famous. And it's so interesting to watch anything Disney related before that because it is more whimsical and it's much more about like, there's always like a little bit more like reality to it. Even this, like, you know, uh, Tia's character, like you just don't see that again. The, every movie, every TV show, after this era is all about like, I want to be famous, I'm yeah. famous. Like that's you know, all if, of it. If this would have came out like five years later, they would have been using their magical powers in front of friends and people would be like, whoa, that's so cool. And then like they become popular. Well, you maybe, know? I don't know, Twitch is too. Twitch is too? Maybe, that that's, maybe that's the case. Because I would only like this if I was like an 11 year old girl with no siblings. Uh, I would give this 11 Ians out of 100. Whoa, that's intense. That's the truth. That's a literally a 1.1 out of 10. It's 11 out of 100. I would actually give this, I, I like the score, I'd give it maybe five Shanes out of 10. Oh okay. yeah. Like for a DCOM, it's just kind of like, it's it's not bad. It's just, it, I, I would kind of just move on from it, frankly. Okay. Yeah, that's my thought. Well Shane, thank you so much for watching this movie with me. And thank you guys so much for watching another one of these episodes. Our next one will have Courtney, and she apparently has a movie she really wants me to watch. Uh, so we'll find out. Whew. You know it's gonna be real shitty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but while you're waiting, go watch, if you haven't seen the one that I did with Tommy where we watched Spy Mate, go watch that right now. It's a lot of fun. It's a wild movie. Uh, I mean, it's got a, it's got a talking ape. Yeah. It's got a snowboarding ape. So, so sick. You can't beat that. Love it. Go watch it. Bye.